Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks when feet and preparation combine The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Royal representing for I just star mindset Rich forever Mindset, blessed love, manners and respect of great the item in the divine name of his imperial majesty Emperor Eli Selassie I I, Empress Menin the First, with Emmanuel I, King Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari, yes, my lord. One more day above ground and we're giving thanks and praise for life which is our ultimate position. Um, with day here, live and direct in Ghana, also uh, the capital of Accra, Zim, and we have one of Ghana's finest reggae and dancehall artist, Kojo Kombolo, Rastafari Bridging. We have to welcome him to the Mindset Program. Blessed love, my lord. Blessed, my lord. Blessed. Rastafari Bridging. Yes, sir. Warm well, welcome to the platform, Honorable. A gift and so not to be here. It's so not to be upon this platform, actually, and to work with the My lad, it's a great honor for you, brother. So that's it. Yeah. That's the fire. Right? That's the fire, right? you know? Yeah, I said the work over the years, mm -hmm. and following the eye, what the eye do, and thing. And, you know, it's an honor now for really link with the eye. In, in flesh, flesh. Sure. you know what I mean? Sure. So give thanks again, my brother. Um, first and foremost, Zin, the I born here um, in Ghana. Yeah. Where, where in Ghana did the I born? In Accra. In Accra. Yeah. So the I is Ghana. Yeah, my, my dad is a guy and my mom from there. Okay. It's in the region, that's from Quill. Okay. Yeah. See, 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 see. So, um, as a as a as a Accra born youth, mm -hmm. Zin, um, talk to me about growing up in the eye surrounding, you know, as a youth growing up. Okay, uh, actually I grew up from the barracks you know, See. because my dad was in the military, my mom was also in the military. See? So I grew up like a soldier, that's how I was trained. You know. That's why you're on the army <laughs> fatigue today. <laughs> and being a child who has military parents, you know, it wasn't easy because you have to be straight and disciplined, you know, that is the, the main code, you know, being disciplined and very straight. But then we have the freedom to go around and play because they'll give you the liberty to go around and play because all works and no play, makes a jacks a dog boy, so yeah. But then, going with my friends, what I realized was much important was education. Because being your daddy being in the military, every day you have to be by the books, whether you like it or not. But me say you too used to love football. I used to play football a lot, you know, me love football. So I sometimes football. yeah, I go out and play football and daddy will come and be vexed and sometimes you get beer beatings, you know. You know, I, I but then the people around the community were so loving mm -hmm. and very kind and sharing. Because we all live together like one people in the community, you know, that's one thing I love about the barracks because uh, your, the it's not barracks. about your parents alone. Every grown-up is your parent. The family and the, said yes, that. and the mothers and the fathers to every child around can, could be your child. And I love that aspect, you know. So that's some of the experience I go through around my people. And I think when at the middle age, maybe from uh, 17 going, I leave the barracks and I experience a different lifestyle too. Yeah. So the, 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 the eye was more enclosed, in, 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 in close community, yeah. or a gated community. Yeah, yeah. So in as the army barracks. Army barracks. Yeah. So the eye wasn't in a, the outside, in a, the local community. No, you, the youth, the no, no, no. You just know your friends, particular friends that you know you play with every time. So. So, so did you go to school in the barracks? Yeah, I went to school That's in the barracks. You know, I school at Bema Camp, you know, big stretch shop. Yeah, That's yeah. why I, I went to primary, then uh, junior high, similarly. So what, what was the experience like you now 
you know, coming out of the out of the barracks you now and, 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 and like yeah, coming out of the real world you now. Okay, it was nice. Uh, let me give you a joke. The first time when we were moving from the barracks to Dance Man, yeah. that's why I live my life to today. When we were moving to Dance Man, yeah. my dad told me, you know where we're going, you can't play because everybody's in their room learning and they speak only English. I was like, wow. So we go there and the first day I was just peeping through the window and I saw some like my age group in you know, the police playing and they were speaking Chi and guy and other languages so I told my junior brother so it was daddy lying to us because he told us we come in here and we're going to see different people like they speak only English but then so we saw people playing youth playing and I was like this is what we want to do but in the barracks although you play but it's like you're in a close area but now it's open for you to experience the life out there you know and this is where I, I we got the privilege because everybody was going out and even it was a barracks still that's the commando's barracks and everybody in Dansuma knows about the commando's barracks you know they're very strict but we had the opportunity to go out and experience different life you know and meeting different people that's where even I was deep more in my music because my dad loved music but in the barracks there it was limited by this time around we were free to go out there and like living in Dansuma that's where most of the carnivals most of the artists grew up you know it was beer fun and entertainment so I love that aspect too and Dansuma is a place that I realized both the rich and the poor were living together okay. there was nothing like I'm rich I'm poor no 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 yes, so I really love that community too and the experience I had from uh, Gona days that's the that's yeah. Yes, uh, give thanks, give thanks. So, alright, um, so what, did your parents was Christians growing up? Or? Yeah, my mom was a Christian though, you know. I, I myself, I went to Christ the King. You know. As a youth. <laughs> as a youth. Yeah. You know, I rest Christ the King as a youth. Yeah. That's where we all saw the faith. So, my, my mom later, even, although my dad was in the deacon, but my mom was a deaconess in the church. But she was very strong in the church. So I used to go to church. I used to play drums in church too. Yeah. yeah I used to play drums. So so all right. So what 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 was it like now? You know, mom and dad. You know, seeing them good, decent. You know, youth or them grow up. You know, I turn into this rasta man. What was that transition? Ah, uh, they were not too so much surprised though. Because uh, I have the chance, when we moved to dance, I have the chance to live with some Jamaicans too. Because my senior brother was into it. You know, he introduced Rastafari to me. I remember when I was a kid, before we go to school, every morning we used to take the Bible, go through the Bible with us, even play Bob Mali song, Buju, Peter, and explain the lyrics to us. You see, and when I was even in primary, I, I think P4, primary 4, my nickname was the teacher, the teachers used to call me Bob Mali. Because I'm that kid, when I come to class, I just uh, grind the chalk, put them in the paper, then I'll pull it out. Like, you know, I'm burning some spliff and they'll report me, I'm going to get punished. The next day you see me doing the same thing. So they used to call me Bob Marley. So when they come, they say, Bob Marley, come here. You know, so, but then my parents, my mom always used to say, hey, you're going to be a prophet. Because, like, I was more like a seer. You know, I see things and I see and they happen. So they used to say, you're going to be a, a prophet. And people used to come, my uncles, and when they visit the house, they say, hey, mom, this your son is going to be a pastor. And then I'll laugh, I'm like, pastor? So when I was in school, when I was in primary, let me tell you this, uh, they asked us to draw, like, whatever I want to be in, in future, like your know, occupation, draw yourself. And do you know, I drew a priest. So I took it to the teacher, and I said, Look at this, uh, a priest. No, I drew a president. Then the teacher told me, no, you can't be a president. It's not the way. <laughs> you can't say you're a president. So just go and clean the president and write a priest. And I was like, what do you mean by a priest? So I just wrote the priest and I took it to, to the teacher and he said, okay, that is all right. So they all knew I was going to be a priest. But then when my senior brother passed on, you know, he transformed. When he transformed, he had some Rastafari books and things that, you know, my mom took all from me because he didn't want me to be a Rastafari. 
You see, but the thing was in me, and I realized I took the faith from there. So one time I came back from school, and then I twist my hair. Like I was just sitting there, and I was like, I don't like this apple. So I was just trying to see how I'm going to look like in case I'm, I'm I have locks, you know, in case I'm on locks. And my mom just stepped in and he said, walk out from the house. So truly speaking, he kicked me out from the house. Then I came back and I was, my hair was right now combed, you know, dressed properly. And I came back home and he said, yeah, that's my son. I don't want you to do that. But you see, you can't fight the spirit and it's a calling to. So later when they realized, but actually I grew my locks after my mom passed. That was when I finished senior secondary school. But my dad was okay with it. He never had a problem with it, you know. But see, he has met people, he's met people with locks and you know, he's well educated and he has traveled a lot too. So he was like, I'm okay with it. Only that you have to be careful with your attitude, don't just bring trouble, stay away from crime. And I told him, you know, I'm, I'm not going to end up in crime, you know. That's my faith and that's where I belong to. So I didn't have too much trouble with the Rastafari outfit, no. Alright, thanks. Thanks. Let's see, I So, alright, so all, all, all the news and all, mm -hmm. all, that, um, all that came on, when they are recognized that you know, yeah. actually had uh, the talent. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you know, I used to love competition. I used to dance, I used to sing, and I used to MC. And when I was in junior high, I used to MC for shows in school. And I used to pretend I'm, I'm speaking Patwa. But because I was coming from Dansuma at that time, you know, Dansuma is where the biggest estate in West Africa. So the people in Bema camp had a different way of like, perception about me coming from Dansuma. Because they used to see Dansuma as a rich estate. And you come in and mingle with them. So every opportunity, they would say, oh, give it to the Dansuma boy, give it to the Dansuma boy. So I used to MC and sometimes, truly speaking, I didn't even know what I was saying. And the teachers would be hailing at me like I'm speaking Patwa. So I said to myself, oh, then I have this talent. So when I was going to senior high, I said I wanted to do general art. Then when my mom came to the school, the teachers were like, your son loves entertainment, so I think he should do that. He was like, no, he's not going to read. You know, general art involves a lot of reading and studying, and I know, I know him personally. He loves entertainment, so I'm not going to accept that. So I was going to do uh, visual art in secondary school, but then it happened when I got there, they look at my grade and say, you better, so I did engineering. So in school, I became the entertainment prefect when I was in senior high, you know, and when I took power, I changed everything. I wasn't using the school machines again. I was renting machines from town with my own money to get boom sound. Like, I changed everything in the school. You see, and they, they, they love it. And I'm the type that I love music because I used to record music way back. But I, I always love to hear myself clearly and crystal. So that's why I try to bring machines from school. But when I was in senior high, you know, the vibe was there. That's why I started playing shows, going out there. But professionally, it was 2205. Because I stepped out from the senior high, that was 2002. Then professionally, 2205 was when I stepped out to put my music out there. Playing my own radio recording. Then I think 20, 2007, I won the Best Dance Hall Artist Competition on Vibe Effect. So after that, I just realized, okay, you have to be focused now, know what you're doing. Now you can't be just walking about and saying you're an artist. You know, you have to study the music, you have to study the crowd. So I got deep into it by production-wise, engineering, mixing, mastering, everything. So in, in, in terms of the music, who was some of the, the words that um, inspired the art? some of the artists that they are in the country. Truly speaking, I would say Sizzla is one, uh, Talib Kuali is one, Naughty by Nature, my favorite. I used to love Naughty by Nature a lot. You know, then maybe I would say Culture. Culture? Yeah. Okay. See, 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 see. All right. Yes, sir. So, all right. The, the eye started to do record, put your, 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 your music up, see? 
Um, what was it like, you know, you know, getting your music being heard, yeah, getting well, yourself well. being heard, like, you know, on the radio station, you know, in the dance hall, you know, yeah. in the clubs, you know, what was that journey? It, it, it was, it was the greatest feeling, though. Yeah. To, to hear your song play in the dance. Because mm. one time I went to Togo, mm. and I was, when I started, you know, professionally, I went to Togo to perform, and I, I did a dub plate for a sound. And the man was, the, the sound man was playing my song, and I called my manager, I was like, damn, look at the people. I didn't believe everybody was jumping to my music. You know, I really love that vibe. So I used to travel to play in Togo a lot, and I used to go to Benin, every February to play. They had a festival, a reggae festival for Bob Marley and I used to go there and play. A big up major in Peja for hosting us from way back, you know, so I used to go there. But then I was pressuring promoters a lot. That's what people don't understand. Sometimes they think the artists, you sit down and you get the breakthrough. No. Even my first show, I even performed in Slovenia. That was 2012. I saw the promoter 2010 when he came to Ghana that was when I performed with Sizzler Kolonji when he came to Ghana I think I was in, at the artist before Sizzler, the last artist the last Ghanaian artist before Sizzler came on stage you know and he really endorsed me that day you know and I really give thanks so when I met the promoter I started talking to him and I gave him my songs and it was like I'll link you, I pressured her I pressured her. later I sent even my songs my CDs you know publish my CDs and send them to promote uh, to Slovenia so they can give it to like drivers just for free to for them to play it in their song and two years time I got the links to play in Slovenia so I've been working towards it to make sure my song is out there because it's not easy for them to even play your song where they don't understand because I quite remember Black Santino used to tell me like why don't you release an album and I'll be telling Santino because of the perception and the mentality of my people I'm focusing more on the international market. And truly speaking, my first street tape I released, I toured with it. I played in France, I played in Slovenia, I played in Austria, Switzerland, before I even moved to Jamaica. So they have been to Jamaica? Yeah, I've been to Jamaica. Wow. Which year was that? Uh, 2013, I was in Gaza. I stayed at Gaza and I was with Bix, one of Cartel's brethren. I was with Bix, then later I moved to Judgment Yard with Sizzlato. I was in St. Anne's. I went to Clary down to the Nyambigi to Okasi Church mm -hmm. to go some viruses like that. See? Yeah. See, see, see. So, 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 all right, so what was that like for the eye? You know, um, experiencing Rastafari in a day, like a bird place where Rastafari been, you know, created, you know, the Nyambigi. Yeah. Oh, so what, 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 what was that experience like for that? Like, different from what you know in Ghana? Yeah, I think, let me give this joke. You see, like the cocoa, you see chocolate. Mm. Chocolate, the natural source is from Ghana. Yeah. The cocoa itself, the natural resource. They, they take it back there, refine it, add stuffs, and now we have chocolate and they bring it back to us. Mm -hmm. So, when I went there, I was like, okay, so this is the end product. Because to me, I know before Okonfo and those people used to have locks. Gone are the days, our ancient people used to have the locks. But maybe the bet, the name Rastafari, is what came from there. So when I went, I was like, okay, I've seen my people. They are my people they took from here. And you know, the treatment also helped me. Because Jamaica rather respected me and wanted me to teach them more than me learning from them. Because they said Kojo, you know the king of the Maroons, they was for Kojo. Mm -hmm. So even in Judgment Yard, what they used to say is, yo, Kojo come back again, Kojo come back again. And you know, the reception there. So when I went to the Nyabingi Trokasi Church, that's where I realized there was difference. You know, their perception and the way they think, the way they do their things. You know, Rastafari has moved to a different level. And as we said, the name Rastafari came from Jamaica. So me, I saw Jamaica, even in reggae music, I saw Jamaica like uh, the university. Let me say this before I, I finish your question. When I went, I went to Rebel Salute, but I didn't perform there. I was with uh, 
he says like the judgment yard but you know i left there when behind all the crowd everybody i was the last person and i was there when one bobo virgin came to me and said yo bobo what go on she's like backstage there go there so i said no i want to be here he said why i said i came here to study i want to see how artists communicate with the crowd and where I'm sitting now, I can see the reaction and the communication, which is very important to me. Yeah, I do reggae music, I do dance, -off, but I see Jamaica to be the university. So I came here to study. So I'm here to study. And I watched how everybody reacted, communicated with the artist, and I did that when I performed with Sizzler, and it was boom. I got the attention. I realized, yeah, Jamaica love vibes. You have to be lyrically strong. If you can win their heart and i did that and i got them but i reason with a lot of twists and i see truly speaking we have to practice what we preach that that key is missing so when because practice, the love yeah. like i was there i see people together smiling just like here it's the same way we smile rastas we love but the bad vibes in in within personal differences mm. it's everywhere so we are saying rasta against rasta rasta against rasta mm. bad energy rasta against rasta is everywhere because i was expect uh, expecting to see different vibes but it's rasta against rasta everywhere so you were more open to see a more unified togetherness but yeah, a family type. Family huh? type part. Leave it, but it wasn't there. But one thing to learn was how administratively they work with the Rasta Fire Mansions in Jamaica. Because the show we even organized at the Nambingi Theocracy Church at the Clarendon. It was organized by Sisla and the Elders. Yes, yeah, so I was there to witness everything and how the whole program went how people came freely to donate even those who don't come to church who don't come to tabernacle because they still believe in the faith they came there to donate we don't really see that here here in Ghana. here in Ghana. like people coming out freely to support rasta movement like even the artists coming to support you, 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 you think um, more education is required and Rastafari with, with, with the people here? Yeah, yeah, more education is required. And secondly, you see, most of the artists even chant Rastafari or sing with their music, but they don't come to Rasta functions, they don't come to Rasta gathering, nothing about Rasta, Rasta conference, seminars, none of them did this. But still, I sing about His Majesty. But in Jamaica, you see the artists putting themselves in a lot. They help the movement, apart from the music. They are living the physical, they are spiritual. Everything helps to uplift the movement. Just like when Reggae Revival started. I, I give thanks, I was there to see when Cornista boss in Jamaica. It was around that time. Interesting. You see, and they were moving around. Apart from the vibes, they moved to the community. They have lectures, they have raising, they have yoga practices with them, but here you don't see that. Um, what, 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 what is your perception of um, Rastafari, Virgin and Sistering, that leave from the diaspora and come to Ghana? What, what, what are your perception of it? Truly speaking, we have to work hand in hand. You see, some of them come and they have different attitudes and different opinions and preferences and everything. But don't forget, it's the media. You see, it's things that they show them over there and the things that they are being told. Because I even have some argument with some people in, in judgment here. So my friend, but I realize, no, it's the things, even in Europe, it's the same thing. I remember one time we had some Rasta uh, elders from UK and when they came to Ghana, they were even surprised when they saw me, like the way I was looking and dressed, the woman can touch my clothes and say, hey Rasta, like, they were surprised, even she was giving a, a friend direction, and he said, you come to the gate, you see a nice bubu brethren dressed, I was like, how? 
You see, they have the perception like, maybe I don't know, excuse me to say, if illiterate or, or mm. like people are live as they have, they've been telling the white people, people are sleeping on trees and all those kind of vibes. But now the world is broad because of the internet. You know, the internet has united the world but divided people. Because now you can be here and see what is happening in Jamaica, but because divide them because we have clans, movement, nations, we have this. But it has united the world but divided people. So to me, when they come, what I feel they should do is see, get the right links, get to the indigenous people, whatever they want to learn. We get people, we get organizations, we get institutions. Okay, because some people come and complain about being fraud and all those kind of vibes, you know. But we get institutions who make, who make things work for them. So they should rather go and contact them so that we won't have this vibes, this bad energy. I was in Africa and I was robbed. And Africa will say, no, they come here and use me like the slave master. It's been going on. And it's not helping the growth of African unity. So the I said more education is more, required. More education is required. Because don't forget even Emmanuel, Emmanuel I told them to come and learn. But they come here and start teaching. Because truly speaking, bless my life, because truly speaking to our people, I would say they, they were ignorant about that already. As I said, the cocoa is from Ghana, but it will go back and come as chocolate, the people rush it. It's just like Rastafara, it's something, something natural from the ancient of days, ancient of days and came back with a different name. Yes, Farah, so the I say more education, yes. a lot of things happen. You know, here and there. True. You know what I mean? And as they are rightly say, you know, King Emmanuel told ones from, you know, the West coming to Africa that they should go and learn, but, you know, they come and want to teach and things like that. I think uh, ones, can, ones can teach still, you know, yeah. vice yeah. versa. Each yeah. one teach yeah. one. Yeah, you know very I mean? important. Yeah, very important. Yeah. Right. That's why it's supposed to be reasoning. Yeah, than so preaching. We yeah, we meet right. and reason. True that. Yeah, because that. even in our local language, the church is called Asori. Asori means awakening. Okay. You see, awakening. So we are awakening each other. Right? We're raising one man who doesn't yeah. supposed to come and talk to everybody and you all sit down and watch. No. That's why Rastafari always like, let's raising and raising because we're raising. Because there are so many reasons why we're raising. Yeah, man. Reasoning is better than. Preaching. Yeah, so at the end of the day, I think they should, we should have a one mind, you know, in whatever we do. Like, I think the division is very big too. You see, and we here should also try and abstain from yes, yes. For thousands of years, humans have been searching, studying the plants around us working to create herbal healing solutions blended with the best from mother nature a gateway to healing and a better life this is the answer Smash the subscribe button see you on the next video i guess start the mindset Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I guess start the mindset.